We already know that Splatoon 3 is on the horizon, and since it's now 2022, I think it's the perfect time to talk about a bunch of things. One of those things I would like to talk about is which old stages have the potential of being featured in Splatoon 3. I already know that a few Splatoon YouTubers have been speculating on this topic, but I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and explain my perspective on this whole thing. Heads up, I am speaking from a casual standpoint as I'm no competitive player, but I do know the pros and cons of each stage enough for me to talk about them. Anyway, let's get started. First, I do want to quickly point out that there are currently 32 different maps in the Splatoon franchise, two of which are the brand new ones from Splatoon 3. Splatoon 1 had 16 total stages, and Splatoon 2 had 23. However, 9 of the OG stages have already been ported to Splatoon 2, meaning that Splatoon 2 has less original maps than the first game, meaning they have an unlikely chance to be revisited. That gives us a total of 21. But then Museum de Avancino got poured to Splatoon 3, meaning we can drop that number down to 20. Which is the total amount of stages that have not been ported yet. I'm going to give a quick example of what I mean by this. As someone who's biased when it comes to Moray Towers, I want to see it in Splatoon 3. But I really doubt we'll be getting the same stage three times in a row, no matter how iconic it is and because it's in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I love Moray Towers as much as the person next to me, but I feel like Flounder Heights will be taking its height of glory. No pun intended. Because I think that's the best substitute. We're gonna go deeper on this topic later on. I just wanted to get the numbers out of the way first. In case you don't know what Urchin Underpass is, this was the first ever stage revealed alongside Splatoon at E3 2014. However, the community is very divided on whether or not this specific stage should be added or not. So, I conducted a poll on the best website possible and asked for reasons why they stand by their votes. A lot of people believe that it will be a fantastic addition to Splatoon 3 for the sake of nostalgia and what the game is trying to accomplish. However, some people believe it won't be a thing because of how similar it is to Eel Tail Alley, as they think of it being Splatoon 3's Urchin Underpass, which is a valid point. But here's why I think Urchin Underpass will make it in, with my personal opinion. I do agree that Urchin should return for the sake of nostalgia, and that it would be perfect for the sake of hyping up the release of Splatoon 3 even further. So, in my opinion, Nintendo leaving out one of the most iconic stages in the franchise might disappoint a lot of fans. This was so iconic, it was featured in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and people freaked out. They might give it the Black Belly Skate Park treatment where they made the stage bigger than what it was before, or they might revamp the stage entirely. They've reconstructed the stage before, they can do it again. However, because of how many different stages there are in total, it might not come out right away on release, which is why there's always hope for it to come out as a free DLC update. But I'm gonna leave it here, and I would like to know your opinion on this in the comments below. Back to what I was talking about at the start, Splatoon 2 had 9 returning stages from the original game, and Splat 3 has won so far meaning there are only six stages that have yet to return. I will be writing off Urchin Underpass since we literally just talked about it, so our number drops to five. I would really suggest taking this list with the tiniest grain of salt imaginable since it is wacky but fitting to the game's theme. So I'm bracing myself for this video to age like fine wine, or like this piece of garbage RGB Bluetooth map. We already know about Museum to Alfonsino being in Splatoon 3, and Nintendo gave us details on how players can go on stages no matter where they are. They're telling us this to give players the idea that a lot of the previous stages are likely to return. Funny enough, there was actually a job listing for a level designer for the purpose of renovating existing stages from previous entries, which might mean that the remaining old stages that I'll be mentioning might be tweaked or have been changed tremendously. Here's my list of stages that I personally think is guaranteed to be in Splatoon 3. <gasps> Mahi Mahi Resort, Flounder Heights, Salt Spray Rig, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, Bluefin Depot, and Hammerhead Bridge. <gasps> <sighs> On a serious note, I really do think these five stages will be coming back. Mahi Mahi Resort was a favorite among Splatoon fans. It has a unique function where the water levels drop when it's halfway through a turf war match, or when people have a specific amount of points in ranked matches. This reveals more turf for players to ink and maneuver. Flounder Heights was well known for its apartment-based design and verticality. It's not Mahi Mahi levels of unique, but it doesn't have to be for it to be one of the most memorable Splatoon 1 stages. Both Hammerhead Bridge and Bluefin Depot are favorites of mine, and I really admire their stage designs, but they do have their minor flaws. Hammerhead Bridge was a fun map, however the bridge was not built for rollers and brushes because the grates didn't allow them to have a lot of mobility. And Bluefin Depot's design allowed players to enter their opponent's territory with absolutely no problem. Chargers like the Elio 3K were insanely overpowered on the stage. What I'm trying to imply is that all of these maps need tweaks and changes in order for them to allow all types of players to enjoy them. Last but not so very at the least, Salt Spray Rig. This was the first symmetrical Splatoon map. 
Which is why this map had a lot of flaws. <laughs> Personally, I really liked Salt Spray Rig in its silly design, but that's probably because I didn't relate to how the losing players felt. It's super easy to be spawn camped on this stage, the pathways are so thin you know you're gonna get splatted one way or the other. Because of how symmetrical this is, one team has the upper hand when it comes to right side peeking. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. Splatoon, third person shooter game, camera placed behind the player's inkling, you're using a charger weapon. Notice how they're holding the weapons on the right side? So if you peek from the wall on the right side, you have a clear shot without having to expose yourself. But if you do it on the opposite side, you are very much exposing yourself completely in order to get a clear shot of your enemies. I know I was supposed to be talking from a casual standpoint, but I couldn't help but point these out. But because this was one of the oldest maps in the history of Splatoon, Nintendo probably realized its flaws, maybe that's why we didn't get it in Splatoon 2, who knows. They'll probably change it up significantly so that it could be better received by the community. But regardless, I would still kill to see the stage return. So, my final verdict, I think Splatoon 3 will bring back specific stages that didn't get a second chance before. We have maps like Camp Triggerfish and Kelp Dome that are already playable on both games, which causes them to have an unlikely chance of being poured over considering how many years we've spent with these maps already. I think it's time for them to finally be put to rest and let the new overlords come in as they are most definitely what a lot of people, including myself, would like to see in the game. Well, this was definitely a completely different video compared to what I usually make, but I would like to know all your thoughts in the comments below, as I know I'll be reading through your opinions on what you might think come to Splatoon 3. There's a chance of me making a part 2 to this video, but I do require input on this first. So feel free to give this video a like or a dislike, whichever helps. Maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Special shoutouts to all my channel members for supporting me up to this point. I would not be here without you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and stay safe out there. Bye!